Ptolemy V was only five or six years old when he became king of Egypt, a pharaoh and a living god. This was after the death of Ptolemy IV and the murder of his wife slash sister, Arisene. Ptolemy's great-great-grandfather, Ptolemy I, was a general in Alexander the Great's army, who, after his commander's death, established his realm in Egypt and started his own glorious dynasty. The Ptolemaic rulers wanted to be perceived as the real deal by the Egyptians, but in reality, they kept a safe distance from Egyptian culture. Luckily for us, as we will soon see, they never even bothered learning their language. Anyway, the local Egyptians who wanted Egypt back thought, hey, this is easier than taking candy from a baby, and rebelled. Nine years later, the 15-year-old Victor wanted to make sure everyone knew who's the boss. He commanded the Egyptian temple's priests to station monuments across his kingdom, stating that the new king is divine and the Ptolemaic dynasty is here to stay. The monuments were written in what was then known as Egyptian scripts, hieroglyphics, common Egyptian, and Greek. Almost 2,000 years later, Napoleon's soldiers in Egypt were assigned to fortify their position in the town of Al-Rashid, a.k.a. Rosetta. While removing some of the rubble, a granite stone marked by three ancient scripts was revealed. It was one of the monuments placed by the boy king. The French, who could read the Greek script, found it to be pretty boring. But what caught their eyes was the upper script, the hieroglyphics. Undeciphered to those days and considered by some to be witchcraft instead of a language. As opposed to other ancient languages, hieroglyphics were used exclusively by the Egyptian priests, making the decoding unavailable to others. The fact that the script repeated itself in three versions, however, paved European scholars' path to deciphering the ancient texts which have been a mystery for thousands of years.